Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins, and Homeworld Remastered Collection comes out next week. So as a shameless fan of the franchise, I've kind of made it my business to learn as much about it as humanly possible by paying a visit to Gearbox Software. If you've never heard of Homeworld, the TLDR is that it's a 3D real-time strategy game based in space, and it calls on you to manage a ragtag fleet of ships as you journey across the galaxy in search of your homeworld. The first game released in 1999 from Relic Entertainment and was hugely groundbreaking for its time, and a sequel followed in 2003, but after the property was acquired by THQ, it kind of languished until that publisher filed for bankruptcy and auctioned off its properties. Gearbox Software picked up Homeworld, and they've been working to give the franchise a second life. I ended up speaking to several of the developers to learn as much as I could, so throughout the week, get ready for a whole bunch of knowledge about one of my favorite franchises ever. For today, let's just take a look at how the remaster got made. When you know, when we started the studio, uh, the first game that that we worked on was called Half-Life Opposing Force, and it was you know the first expansion for Half-Life, and it was published by Sierra. And it, this was 1999, and Sierra was also publishing a game called Homeworld. And so when we went to our first E3 as Gearbox with uh, with Opposing Force right next to us in the Sierra booth was this this really cool game uh, called Homeworld, this really awesome uh, space strategy simulation game confirmed. that just looked amazing, and the, the art direction was incredible, and the fact that you can look at the universe in 3D and, uh, and, and command a fleet was just super badass. And so we kind of fell in love with the game at, at that moment. And uh, it's always been sort of strange and a little bit sad, I think, to us when we reflect back that, you know, after THQ acquired Relic and, and the brand, that it, it was just sort of sitting there and no one was doing anything with it. We were always sort of hoping for more Homeworld games that just never happened. And when uh, when THQ went away uh, and, and they were auctioning off all their properties, uh, Brian's like, you know, we should we should consider buying this. It's valuable and it's cool and it would be fun to play in that space. You it was know? like, here's this thing that I loved, beloved. Every couple of years I would, you know, start it up and try again. Um, going through whatever rigmarole there was to like deal with the whole, you know, office CD and everything. And over the years it became harder and harder to use it. So I knew that it would be really great to have it on some, some form of digital distribution. And it was, um, that was sort of it in the nutshell. It was like, okay, well, let's, let's see how we get this to people. And then when we heard about THQ um, doing you know, their thing with um, the bankruptcy and all that, uh, we decided, well, look, now's our chance, let's try. And I kind of convinced the guys to go a little overboard and, uh, and do it. Uh, we came in that day with like some shirts that we had made that said in it to win it, which was silly, but it was fun. And uh, so we, we, were, we were going determined to, to win. And so we did. So we, we won it. And then at that point, that's when sort of like, oh, my God, now we have it. What are we going to do now? Uh, it was kind of interesting, like, playing the game, especially Homeworld 1. I mean, Homeworld 1 was done quite a while ago, and it was really innovative at the time. But, you know, it's 15 or 16 years old now. So the graphics, if you just try and ship it out to people, it, it's more of a novelty if you try to release it with the graphics that it had back in the day. Whereas taking that game that a lot of people have good memories of and just bringing it into the modern age it becomes less of a novelty and it becomes more of like this is a, a legitimate game that we're coming out with here. Um, and it does better for the fans. I mean, it's still got a fan base out there that to this day, I'd say it's about 12 years or whatever, that these mod guys have just been still supporting uh, this world. So to be able to give them something that instead of just being a novelty of, okay, we've made your game work, to make it more like, we've made your game work and you know, it stands up in today's age is just better. So we had this little team we put together, but we realized, man, there's, there's like so much history with the software and it, it's gonna take us forever to figure this out. And, and when we also started wanting to improve the content, um, you know, we were thinking maybe there'd be some higher fidelity source that we could tap into, and now we were going to have to build everything from scratch. So, so that led to us thinking about, well, you know, we're talking to Rob, and there's he knows who else there is, and I got a list from Alex Garden too, who founded Relic, about like here's all the people you want to try to track down. So I had that list, and 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 you know, and then we also had our own kind of ways into the community. So Brian Burleson, who's the producer, just started reaching out and started, you know 
developing relationships with everybody he could and, uh, and, and brought as many of them into the fold as possible. So it was like awesome that, you know, Paul Reske signed up to, you know, he did all the original audio and I mean, it's a beautiful soundtrack. I mean, he won awards and stuff and he had his original DAT tapes, you know, so we had the original source and he was totally hyped to go in and re-record stuff that could be done better and, you know, fix some of the, the issues with like some things that didn't quite match up between Homeworld 2 and Homeworld 1 and like and just use the best possible source that wasn't crunchy, like, you know, everything had to be compressed onto a CD and like so he, he got in there and just kicked a lot of ass and um, got some of the programmers involved, also the mod community, like some of the, the biggest mods and some of the key guys that, that are behind modifying the game, they got involved and it's just been a really cool kind of outpouring of, of support and commitment to do this right and it's it's neat to, to watch it and to be a part of it. Are you excited to see Homeworld getting a second life? Is the franchise new to you? Let us know in the comments and we'll be back tomorrow with more details. You get the best in video games and more right here so make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel and we'll keep you in the know.